Brother Esau said just a moment ago, when I think of the goodness of Jesus yes. and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me one more time. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. Anybody? Hallelujah. hallelujah. In Jesus' name, you may be seated in the name of the Lord. The word said that it was a multitude, a mass of people following Jesus. Little room, little room to move, even less to probably make sense of it all. Imagine, imagine a sea, just a sea of people, Jesus in the middle of them. And all of them following the course of the current of who he was. When suddenly, Jesus stops and turns around in the press of the people and says, who touched my clothes? The volume, the volume of the mass of people trying to reach to him and gain his attention had to be incredible. The volume just had to be incredible. Those who got close enough to reach out to him probably could not be counted, couldn't be recognized, identified, and so forth. And when he turned and asked who touched me, the disciples' immediate response was, you see this multitude? Right. Understand the inflection of their voice. You see this multitude and you're asking, who touched me? Uh, they, knew, they knew it would probably be easier to find out who did not touch him than who did, in fact, right. in that crowd. Yet it was her touch, her reach, her, her silent cry that captured his attention out of all the rest. Look at it. And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole, go in peace and be whole of the plague. Uh, through, all, through all the noise, the chaos, the crowd that had gathered, it was that one hurting heart that stopped him in his steps. It was not even an arm. It was not an arm or, a, or an ankle or a hand uh, that she held to, but it was simply just a hem of his garment, a, a mere thread. Do you understand this? A mere thread that she held to. That thread... The thread that held to the heart was all that it took to stop the creator of all creation in his tracks and take the time to heal that one woman in the right. multitude. Right. <laughs> right. It's not to say that their needs, the others uh, were not met, nor that their cry was any less important of the multitude that had amassed around him. But it was simply demonstrating, understand this, it was simply demonstrating the goodness and the mercy of God at work for us that none of us is ever outside of his sight and saving. No matter how it looks, how it feels, where we are, who's around us, who is not around us, we are never outside of the sight and the saving of Jesus. The father stood on the porch looking for the prodigal, and while he was yet a great way off, <laughs> I, I have prayed this thousands of times, I feel, while he was yet a great way off, he seen him coming and ran to him. It's the nature of God. It's the love of God. He cares for his own in the crowd and chaos that life can be. And he always, he always has an eye for you. Yes. Anywhere and everywhere, God always has an eye for you. 
We, like the woman with the issue of blood, may feel no worth to face him, or like a prodigal who just wallowed in a pig pen, feel like that we have no more right to be called his child. But the Father always can find us in a crowd. Do you know that? Yes. He can always find us in a crowd. He always hears us, uh, he always hears us when, we, when we cry. He can see us while we're yet a great way off. Know us when we are crying and call us, calling to him, distinguishing our voice from all the other noise that this world can so often bring. Every parent in this place, every parent in this place, if your child uh, cried out in, in need in a crowd of people, there is something God, you understand what I'm saying? There's something God put within you that you know in a split second that, that that's your baby's cry. Uh, your body and your brain, mom and dad, it, it, it leaps to respond. You can hone in on it with preci precision. You, you see and hear nothing but them. Your heart becomes fixed on your baby's cry. And when you get to them, there may be others helping them and tending to their needs. But the first thing that that baby does, uh, they will do when they see you, they'll reach to you and hold on to you for dear life because they know that you will save them. Uh, you can find it in a crowd. You know their voice. You know where they are. You can move heaven and earth to get to them. He, uh, uh, can I tell you, that's the way God looks at us this day. That's the way my cry feels to him. That's the way your voice reaches to where he is. Amen. Look at this. I love the Lord. Amen. Because he hath heard my voice. Everybody say, my voice. My voice. He's heard my voice and my supplication because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. There is something about your voice that moves the heart of God. Heaven and earth, take notice when you and I cry out to him. All the angelic hosts that we are encamped about with today takes notice of what you and I sing because we have something within us that moves the heart of God. In those silent times of our life when we feel like that no one notices or knows, God hears us when we pray. When you bury your head at nighttime and you think that it's not going to get any better, he heard the very first breath that you breathed when you said it. Amen. Why? Because he knows my voice. Yes. He knows your voice. He can hear you. And he runs to where you are. Yes. Amen. Yes. There's something about your voice that moves the heart of God. I love him because he, loved, because he loves me that way. I love him because he hears my voice. Do you understand that? I love it that God loves my voice. I love it that God hears my voice. That he hears my prayer. That he hears my supplication. He hears me cry. Amen. When you and I cry, he, he listens, he inclines his ear to us, he silences the noise, and, and he rushes to where we are. Your cry does not fall on deaf ears. And what you are praying about is not a pointless petition. He knows, he hears. It may not be articulate and well said or well done. It may not be the verbiage that you want to say every time, but he knows. He hears your heart, he sees you. He will stop the momentum of a multitude just to take care of you. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I love the 34th Psalm. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. This poor man cried. This poor, everybody say this poor man. This poor man. Uh, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. He heard you. He heard you cry. He knows your voice. He knows what you're afraid of. He knows what you're afraid of. He knows when you feel lost. He knows when you're tempted. He knows when you're hurt. He hears your loneliness. He knows when you're trying your best. He knows when you are discouraged. He knows when you're disappointed. He knows. He heard you pray it. Uh, you may not feel like you deserve any answer. You may feel like you're not worthy enough, but he hears you. He knows. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Every now and then you need to posture yourself in a place of prayer that you pray that way. This, this poor man cried and God heard me. Every now and then you need to go back and you need to rehearse it in your mind what, the, what that prayer was, what that answer to that prayer was that when you prayed, uh, that poor man prayed, God heard and he answered. Come on, I'm looking at a, at, a, at a group of people today that somewhere along the way you had a prayer answered and every now and then it's good to go back and take an inventory and realize when I cried, he heard me. That's right. When I, when I knocked on the door, he answered. When I sought for him, I found him. When I asked, he gave me what I needed. Come on, anybody understanding that? Because it is a desperate place when we get to a, that point where we don't look back and realize that God's been there all along and he heard my cry. This poor man cried and he heard my cry. Amen. Amen. I don't deserve it, but he heard me anyway. Why? Because he loves me. You don't deserve it today. 
but he loves you. Uh, You're not worthy enough, but he loves you. Amen. You're not righteous enough, but he loves you. You're not holy enough, but he loves you. Amen. You you, you can try all day long, but understand this. He's still going to love you whether you get it right or whether you get it wrong. He hears your cry. Somebody ought to thank the Lord right now. Most of the time when we cry, cry out, it's, it's because we feel lost or we feel alone or we feel confused and we want an answer and we don't see, see one. The, 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 problem, the problem that we face feels, it feels consuming. And when God called Moses to lead his people to deliverance, it was, it was his response. Uh, it, it was in response to his promise and, and their petition. Do you understand this? This was, a, this was a twofold answer. When God called Moses to lead his people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt, it was, it was in response uh, to his promise and their petition. He had promised that there would come the day that he would deliver them, and God always keeps his word. Yes, he does. Look at this. I need everybody to hear this, this next few points here, if you would, please. God will fulfill his promise. We must do our part to be in a place and a position to accept the provision of that promise. Yes, sir. Everybody get this? I promise you God's going to fulfill his promise we got to make sure that we're in a place to receive the provision of the promise. Yes, sir. We can't ask God to do something that we are unwilling to live a life to accept. Now, I'm going to be talking about it here in just a month or two, and we'll, we'll do a series about it. But can, I, but can I just say it quickly today, that, that when we petition God for certain answers or certain blessings in our life, we are sitting here today with blessings in our life that we ask God for, that we are obligated to a response in our life because he gave it to us. Amen. You pray, God, give me that raise. God, give me that job. God, answer that. Then, then you need to pay your tithe and you need to drop in the offer. Are we okay with that? That's still the truth. You, you pray for that baby to be born, then you need to be bringing that baby to church. You pray God would work that situation out. Well, when he works it out on the other side of it, there's a responsibility that we respond to the promise that God has given us the provision of. I'll move on now. Uh, God will fulfill his promise. We just got to make sure that we're doing our part on the other side of the fulfillment of the promise. Uh, When we cry and ask, we should live a life to accept the answer faithfully. Not just in the immediate emotion of the moment, but faithfully on the other side of the provision. Mm. Not just in the emotion of the moment, but faithfully years, seasons, generations, decades on the other side of the provision of the promise. Israel still had to walk out of Egypt. That, the answer required effort, in other words. They cried out, God, deliver us. He said, I'm going to deliver you, but they still had to walk out of Egypt. He didn't translate them to the promised land. There was a Red Sea that they had to walk through. There was a wilderness that they had to go through. Amen. There's something in our life that we have to respond to when God answers uh, the, the petition that we bring to him. Amen. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. This is wonderful. Now, walk with me. God was saying, my children, my children are crying, and I have heard them. There are taskmasters in Egypt mistreating them, And I know how sad they feel. Now, I'm just breaking this down in my own words. I know how sad they feel. I see their sorrow. I see their sorrows, and I'm not happy about it. You remember how it was when, maybe it wasn't this way for you, but I think so. You remember how it was when when somebody mistreated you, that bully at school? Anybody had a bully at school? One, two, come on, be honest. Uh, How many of you were a bully at school? Maybe that's what I should ask. (laughs) You remember how it was when you remember how it was when somebody mistreated you and, and you went home and and you told your mom and dad about it and maybe it was in the kitchen around dinner time and whoever it was taking care of you you told them about it and all of a sudden silence came in the room and mom stopped cooking dad put down the paper whatever turned off the TV and 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 turn around and look at you and say they did what to you? Right. Right. What'd they do to you? Yeah. 
You knew right then, just by the look on their face, you knew the dad and mom were on the move. Um, your dad was bigger than their dad. Huh? Your mom, your mom was taking that apron off and had that look on her face like, nobody touches my baby like that. Anybody? That's kind of what was going on here. God said, I heard their cry. I'm on my way. I know what they're going through. Hang on. I'm going to show up. God sent Moses and he started to fight for them. Everybody needs to hear this right now. God heard their voice. He heard their voice. He sent Moses. He heard their cry. And he started fighting. Lice, locusts, frogs and flies, boils and blood. God used all the plagues. Do you understand this? God used all the plagues to fight for them. Every one of them standing as a defense for his people. Don't under- underestimate. Somebody understand this. Don't underestimate how much God loves you and in what ways he will fight for you when you cry out to him. Don't underestimate how God will do things simply because he loves you and he will fight for you. Israel, okay, hear this. Israel, Israel could hear the buzz of the swarms of the flies landing on the Egyptians. Um, He could see, Israel could see them Scratching, scratching their lice-filled heads of hair. You guys are itching right now, aren't you? You're thinking about it, all right? Huh? Let's stop and think about lice in head for a moment. We're all going to be scratching here in just a second. Uh, they, they seen their, them scratching their heads with all the lice falling out. And they could hear the croaks from the houses filled with frogs. They could see the blood in the bowls that were once filled with water. But it was darkness. It was the darkness that was so unique. God used darkness to fight for his people. Look at this. And the Lord said unto Moses, the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. For three days, three days the Egyptians had to sit still in darkness. They couldn't move. Uh, It was so dark, it was so dark, the word said, that you could feel it. Uh, And all the while, Israel had light. Wherever Israel was, there was light. Wherever Egypt was, there was darkness. All right, I'm not sure how the line looked. I've thought about this often. I'm not sure how the line looked. I'm not sure where it began and where it ended. But God made it clear when he heard their cry that there was a difference. Probably at first... They could hear the bumps, the, uh, the Israelites could hear the bumps and the banging and the people stumbling over what they could not see, trying to feel their way to something familiar, until finally there was nothing more than silence only shattered by the occasional voices calling out to others, trying to find some, some meaning, something, some reference. Israel could look out their window and, and, and see a wall. Do you understand this? This really happened. Do you believe this? Israel could look out their window and see a wall of darkness standing between them and their taskmasters. There was a line. I I don't know if they could walk up to it, stick their hand inside of it. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, Because you just don't touch certain things. But nonetheless, there there was a wall of darkness that they could not see into. They didn't know what God was doing. They weren't able to see what was happening beyond that veil, just just knowing all the while that that at some point in that 400 years they had cried and and God heard them and, and now he was fighting for them. Somewhere along the way, their voice went up to heaven and, and God knew it. 
It's difficult sometimes. Hear me? It is difficult sometimes to not see what God is doing. That there is a veil of darkness that you cannot penetrate with your vision, with your heart, with your life. You don't know how God's doing it. To not understand what's taking place in the darkness. But understand this. If he has heard our cry, then he's going to answer our cry. For three days they stood staring at a void that they could not see through, waiting and wondering what God was doing. Your season may feel like forever, but God is doing something in the darkness that you cannot see because he heard your voice. Musicians, somewhere along the way you prayed the prayer. It may have been a decade ago. It may have been a it may have been it may have been longer than that. It might have been yesterday. It might have been last week, but somewhere he heard your voice. He he heard that prayer. He heard what mattered to you. He heard he heard what concerns you when you breathed it out and you prayed and and God came running. And, and, and you may not see it. You may not be able to know it. You may not understand what he's doing in the darkness. You may not understand what is beyond the veil of your flesh that is able to see in and through. But look at this, if you would please. He revealeth the deep. And secret things. <laughs> and he knoweth. He knows what's in the darkness. And the light dwells with him. God knows. Come on, somebody that you feel like that you just uh, don't know if you can take another step. God knows. He heard your cry. He knows your voice. He is still. He is fighting. He is fighting for you. And he will save you. Why? Because he is light. And, and, and so he will not let you live in darkness. He won't, he won't let you remain there. When was the last time? Everybody just walk with me for a second more, okay? When was the last time you, you cried out to him? Whether, whether in joy or, or in need, because not every cry out is a, is a cry of despair or sorrow, but sometimes, you know, it's healthy every now and then, Brother Trace, that, that we just lift our voice and we cry out in joy. Oh, oh God's been good to me. Oh, God's... Anybody? Oh, God's been faithful to me. Oh, God's been righteous to me. Oh, God's answered my prayer. Oh, God's loved me. When was the last time you got out? Amen. Maybe not here in church, but you, you just got out there and you danced a little before the Lord. And, and you reminded yourself, if nobody else, that God has been faithful to me. And, and he's been righteous to me. And, and oh, he's been there when I didn't deserve it. And I just need to give him, I need to give him my voice. I need to give him my voice lifted. And I just need to praise him. Anybody? Why don't you do that right now? Because the truth of the matter is, we can get a little too silent about God. When was the last time your flesh erupted in a demonstrated response of the cry of your heart that it was making? That you just decided, God, I'm going to cry out to you. Whether it's despair, whether it's joy, just cry out. Why? Because God loves your voice. <laughs> okay, I'm almost done. It, it, it was the cry of blind of a blind beggar sitting low by the roadside that got the attention. Do you understand? He was sitting by the roadside, yeah. the Bible said. In other words, he was down on the ground. He was not up standing. He was sitting on the ground and he cried out to Jesus. It was the hem of Jesus that the woman with the issue of blood touched, not his sleeve, not his collar. Uh, it is often from our lowest places in life that beneath the crowd and the coverings that we live in that our cry reaches to Jesus. It's when we're at our lowest, when we don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. We don't know where to go. We don't know how it's going to turn out. But when you cry out to him, he loves your voice. And he can distinguish it from all the other noise that surrounds you. Wherever you are right now, hear me, high or low, victory or defeat, saved or lost, he has an ear for your voice, and God is listening to you today. Amen. This altar's open. Whatever you have, whatever you brought, whatever you need, you need to repent, be baptized in his name, filled with the Holy Ghost. He's the answer. All you got to do is cry out. All you got to do is lift your voice. All you got to do is begin to pray, because God loves to hear what you have to say. He loves to hear your voice. He loves to hear you cry out in joy or cry out in sorrow and cry out for him to save you. Come on. He delights in you. He delights in who you are today. So why don't you do that? God, I need you. God, save me. God, deliver me. Righteous one, help me. Come on. There's an answer in the house today and his name is Jesus. He knows my name. He knows my name. Oh. Come on, you don't have to understand it all. Just 
Begin to talk to him. He loves your voice. He loves it when you pray. And he might be doing things in the darkness that you may not know for a while. That's all right. He's fighting for you. Oh, yes, 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 yes.